But I'm, I'm very proud anyway. Very proud to be. Uh, so you're in training now. You, I saw I'm you being the coached bucket. by the former world champion, a man named Jeff the Gelding Harvey. Jeff the Gelding Harvey. Yeah. <laughs> I think he was a soprano singer, wasn't he, Jeff the Gelding? <laughs> yeah, he is now anyway. <laughs> oh, you did some boxing. You were a fighter for a bit, eh? Yeah. Now, what, 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 what were you, middleweight, lightweight? No, welterweight. Oh, welterweight. How did you do? Were you a good fighter? Um, I could beat mugs. You could beat? You know, clowns. Clowns? Yeah. But then I got in with a couple of guys who could really fight, and it was all over. That was the end of that. That was the end of that. Did you get your nose? Are you actually, look, were you, was your nose broken one time? It looks like you took a About three times. times. Yeah. About three times. Yeah, I was going to say, it looked like you took a couple of times. It has no, shots. um, you get a profile shot of it. Has oh, no, there's no. Has no bone in it. Anymore. I tell you, you now, you do that, you sit in brine, you put the ferret in your pants. Yeah. I think you have to worry. <laughs> if I have a good life, I don't. Uh, you have to worry about women oh, bothering geez. at all. No. <laughs> have you ever been seriously injured? Mm. I know you worked on bridges and you did the. Oh, yeah. What did I read once about you having a, a, a brain hemorrhage? And oh, you almost yeah. died? Yeah, serious. Yeah. I don't. Cerebral hemorrhage. Now, how did, how did that come about? Was it ferret well, in your ear? No, oh. no, I wasn't, I wasn't into the ferrets then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> No, I was, uh, I was working out in an oilless place and I thought I'd see how much I could bench press. And there was no one else in the gym and um, I was pressing a, about, something about the size of a refrigerator and I felt this pain in the back of my head and I thought, oh, I've pinched a nerve. And it just got worse and worse. It was like an eagle had come down out of the sky and fastened onto my skull. This terrible pain and I, there was no one else at the gym and I left there and was, went out to my car. And by now I'm sort of, you know, my eyes are rolling and starting to throw up and sort of head was on fire so quite cleverly I got into my car naturally <laughs> and, uh, and drove to the hospital but with my head hanging out the window because I was feel like I was going to pass out so yeah, yeah. probably the only man in the world ever to drive a car whilst having a cerebral hemorrhage <laughs> and sort, of, sort of walked into the doctor and said oh I don't feel too good you know pinched it no you have no cerebral hemorrhage and my brain was bleeding wow and uh, the lucky part was it it bled in a part of my brain that I don't use much anyway. Right. <laughs> that's, a, that's a fairly large part of it. Yeah, the, the whole thought process yeah. part. Yeah. So I was supposed to die, you know, I, I had um, eulogies in the newspapers at, at home in particular. It was actually on here on entertainment. That's right, I remember hearing that, that you were dead, yeah, and I thought dead, maybe dead. I had that wrong. And said I died of a stroke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did have it wrong, Jason. Yeah, I <laughs> Thanks for the flowers. Was that fun to read your eulogy? I mean, a bit like... Oh, no, it was terrible funny. because they all said wonderful things about me, so yeah. it was a... <laughs> a taste of what it would be like if you really were dead, you know, but after a couple of days it, it stopped bleeding, they didn't have to operate, and it heals itself and it's a freak thing. It was something I was born with and it will never happen again. But um, the press never forgave me at home. Oh, they, you know, they wanted like, you dead. You know, like a, they wanted me dead, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I walked out of the hospital a week later, I'm, an arm, I'm okay, I went back to ferret legging, you know. Yeah. Sort of. <laughs> so they attacked me from then on. Now let me ask you about, about Flipper. Did you like working with the dolphin? Was that fun? No. No, not at all. <laughs> very honest. They hated the mongrel. Yeah, hated no, they said, uh, they said uh, never work with uh, animals, the kids, kids yeah. and don't work on the water. Yeah. And so, it, like, we were with Universal doing Flipper immediately after Waterworld. But, you know, it all turned out magical. We, um, we had eight hur hurricanes come through, and none of them hit the island, didn't stop us filming for one day. So we survived all that wind, and then we go to the box office, and Twister comes along and blows us right out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you're number two, you're the family yeah. film. Yeah, that's right. You know, I auditioned for that role in Flipper. Did you know? I know, I heard about it. I undercut your price. But my, uh, my, uh, the dolphin was so foul mouthed. I know, we all heard that. That was about the problem. It. It's embarrassing. <laughs> I'll show you the clip. Where's that? Do we have the clip from my. Uh... Take a look here. Hey, look, why don't you get the crabs, you little squid? <laughs> hey, hey! I got your bait right here. Lick my fins, you upright walking. I'd be surprised if you could find your ass in a Greek prison. <laughs> anyway, the film is Flipper, and it's the number two movie. So that's very good. Yeah. That's very good. <laughs> Paul Hogan, we'll be right back with Ricky J. Thank you, Paul. Good to see you. Ricky J. right after this.